Alright YouTubers, welcome back to War Thunder with the Angry Nerd. Today I thought we would take a look at the US M3A1. Now, if I was going to drive the M3A1, I might as well go ahead and use the premium USMC version of it since I have it because it has a reward of 20% plus 20% and a research bonus of a hundred percent but if you don't have the USMC version of this vehicle you should be able to get similar results with the regular M3A1 Stuart so without further ado the M3 Stuart or light tank M3 was an American light tank of World War II it was supplied to the British and Commonwealth forces under the Lend-Lease program prior to the U.S. entering the war. Thereafter, it was used by U.S. and Allied forces until the end of the war. Observing events in Europe, American tank designers realized that the light tank M2 was becoming obsolete and set out on improving it. The upgraded design with thicker armor modified suspension and new gun recoil system was called the light tank M3. Production of the vehicle started in March 1941 and continued until October 1943. Like its direct predecessor, the M2A4, the M3 was initially armed with a 37 millimeter M5 gun and five 30 caliber Browning machine guns, one mounted coaxial with the main gun, one on top of the turret in an M20 anti-aircraft mount, one in a ball mount in the right bow, and one each in the right and left hull sponsons. Later, the main gun was replaced with the slightly longer M6 cannon and the sponson machine guns were removed. Internally, the radial engine was at the rear and the transmission to the driving sprockets at the front. The prop shaft connecting the two ran through the middle of the fighting compartment. The radial engine compounded this problem having its crankshaft high off the bottom. When a turret floor was introduced, the crew had even less room. The rear idler sprocket was moved to a trailing ground contact position. To relieve the demand for the radial aerial engines used in the M3, a new version was developed using twin Cadillac V8 automatic engines and a twin hydromatic transmission operating through a transfer case. This variation was quieter, cooler, and roomier. And because of its automatic transmission, it simplified crew training. The new model was initially called M4, but was redesignated M5 to avoid confusion with the M4 Sherman. The new M5 also featured a redesigned hull with a sloped glacis plate and driver's hatches moved to the top. Although the main criticism from the units using it was that the Stewart's lacked firepower. The improved M5 series kept the same 37 millimeter gun. The light tank M3 was given the name Stewart by the British after the American Confederate Civil War General Jeb Stewart. The name Stewart was also used to refer to the M5 variant. The British must find some kind of 
humor in naming American-made vehicles after a dark time in American history. But I don't know, up until the Second World War, we really hadn't done all that much anyway, except for, I don't know, kick the crown out of the colonies. I guess we can't expect the British to name vehicles after Revolutionary War patriots, now can we? But anyway, I digress. In British service, it also had the unofficial name of Honey after a tank driver remarked, she's a honey. To the United States, the tanks were officially known as Light Tank M3 and Light Tank M5. The British Army was the first to use a Light Tank M3 in combat. From mid-November 1941 to the end of the year, about 170 Stuarts in a total force of over 700 tanks, took part in Operation Crusader during the North African Campaign, with poor results. The M3 Stuarts were the first American crewed tanks in World War II to engage the enemy in tank versus tank combat, when the U.S. Army joined the North African Campaign in late 1942 Stuart units still formed a large part of its armor strength. After the disastrous Battle of Kazarine Pass, the U.S. quickly followed the British in disbanding most of their light tank battalions and subordinating the Stuarts to medium tank battalions performing the traditional cavalry missions of scouting and screening. For the rest of the war, most U.S. tank battalions consisted of three companies of M4 Shermans and one company of M3 or M5s. In Europe, Allied light tanks had been given the cavalry and infantry fire support roles, since their main cannon armament could not compete with heavier enemy armored fighting vehicles. However, the Stuart was still effective in combat in the Pacific Theater as Japanese tanks were both relatively rare and were lighter in armor than even allied light tanks. Japanese infantrymen were not well equipped with anti-tank weapons and as such had to use close assault tactics. In this environment, the Stuart was only moderately more vulnerable than medium tanks. In addition, the terrain and poor roads common to the theater were unsuitable for the much heavier M4 medium tanks. And so initially, for both sides, it was advantageous to deploy light armor. Heavier M4s were eventually brought in to overcome heavily entrenched positions, though the Stuart continued to serve in a combat capacity until the end of the war. The M5 gradually replaced the M3 in production from 1942 on, and the M5 was succeeded by the light tank M24 in 1944. The number of M3s and M5s produced was so great, over 25,000, including the 75 millimeter howitzer motor carriage M8, that the tank remained in service until the end of the war. Now in War Thunder, the M3A1 USMC is a rank 1 with a battle rating of 1.3. It has a 262 horsepower engine propelling the 12.6 ton vehicle to a top speed of 36 miles per hour. It comes equipped with a 37 millimeter M6 cannon with a reload rate of 3.5 seconds. Now if you would like to get your hands on the M3A1 USMC version, you can find it in the American Tech Tree in the far right column, second vehicle down. It is a premium vehicle. I would not, however, uh, advise purchasing it at this point. I only purchased it to gain advanced access to the rest of the American lineup. The regular M3 and M3A1 are located in a double tab in the far left column, second tab down. Okay, so that's enough talking about the M3A1. 
let's uh, hop into a game and see what we can do with this low tier vehicle. Okay, looks like we picked up a domination map. It's Poland. So that's pretty good. I like Poland. Let's see, mess around with the ammo just a little bit. I can't decide what I want to do with it. All right, that'll work. My OCD, I had to have that top number, you know, even. Alright, machine guns work there. Run down here to this right side. These little fast tanks can get kind of squirrely on you. This one's not too terribly bad. Holy shit, that was lucky. Oh, and he stopped. Well, oh, he just made it easy. Still took me three shots. Bouncing shots all over the place. It's hitting me. Oh no. The crew's not looking too healthy. I'm sure that really reduced. Oh, what is this? Just have to get away. Oh, there's somebody else. Oh, shoot. Oh, look how long it's taking me to reload. Dang it. Oh, no. Two 
play for him. Still on the other side of the pond, he's bothering me. And get back over here and give him just a couple of presents. I think I got it. Felt kind of vulnerable waiting for that gun to reload, so. Shooting at me. shot. Dang it. And missed it. <sighs> Dang it, man. Here we go. Oh, 
reload rate is really hampering my style. tracks. The Avenger, Teamwork, Professional, Shadow Strike Streak, Ground Wind Streak, One Shot, Final Blow, Heavy Metal Hero, and Anti Mech. Ten ground units destroyed to assist. First place in the team. 30,471 Silver Lions. Okay. Not bad. Let's go ahead and save it. Okay, so that was a look at the M3A1 USMC. You should be able to get about the same results with the M3A1 regular Stewart. Um, if you like the video, like it. If you didn't, don't. Subscribe if you would. I could really use the help. I'm going to put a link to my Facebook page, uh, my Twitch channel, and my Twitter account. If you would hop over and take a look at those and follow and like accordingly um, I would really appreciate it I could use the help on those as well but uh, as always thanks for watching nerd out